Hi, I'm Anupam. Let's understand business. In this current session, I shall be throwing light on Michael Porter's diamond model or simply Porter's diamond model. This model is also sometimes referred to as Porter's model on competitive advantage of nations. Michael Porter's diamond model is one of the founding models of business management and business strategy. It tries and answers some of the most basic questions that arises within the mind of a practitioner. For example, why are corporations domiciled in certain countries more successful than others? What are industry clusters and why are they relevant? When is the right time for a firm to go international? Do governments have a role in the development of industrial clusters and successful corporations? This model basically counters the notion of public laissez faire or the principle of no regulation by the government. Porter's diamond model helps to understand the dynamic interplay between the firm's corporate strategy and the competitive advantages of a country. It helps to assess environmental competitive advantage where individual business units, organizations or industries operate. It basically talks about the habitat in which organizations work. In the words of Michael Porter, productivity is the main factor for international competitiveness and the standard of living of a country's population can be improved as a direct result of increase in that factor. Before we move on to the model, let us have a look at the background of the study. In the early 1980s, US industry saw its economic competitiveness eroded by the Japanese and European competitors. During 1985, a four-year study was initiated, where 10 major trading nations and 100 industries that covered almost 50% of the total world's export were studied. This study was led by Michael Porter. As per Michael Porter, the classical international trade theories, which mainly focused on slowly changing the inherited variables such as natural resources, climate, size of working population, etc., could only partially explain why nations gain competitive advantage in a given industry. As per the study, the initial findings found that successful industries tend to be located within particular cities, regions or clusters. These industry clusters are geographical concentrations of interconnected businesses, suppliers and associated institutions in a particular field. Geographical concentrations helped to efficiently draw on each other's resources and capabilities and to benefit from a shared culture and learning experience, supply capabilities and local infrastructure. Clusters lead to productivity increases, higher innovation rates and faster new business developments. Clusters may take different forms. Firms producing different products across the value chain or they may be firms producing similar products at different stages of the same supply chain. For example, we have the banking industry cluster in London and New York. Similarly, we have the film industry cluster in Mumbai and Hollywood. We also have the internet or software cluster in the Silicon Valley and Bangalore. As a result of the study, Michael Porter proposed the diamond model 
विच एक्सप्लेन कॉम्पिटेटिव एडवांटेज ऑफ नेशन इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ फोर मेन एट्रीब्यूट दैट शेप द नेशनल इन्वायरमेंट इन विच लोकल कनेक्टेड फर्म्स कंपीट दीज एट्रीब्यूट आर the factor conditions demand conditions related and supporting industries and firm strategy and rivalry all these four attributes are interconnected in a unique mesh to create competitive advantage of a nation we shall discuss each of these attributes separately the factor conditions are the important determinants of national competitiveness and nation's relative position in vital industrial production factors such as skilled labor raw material availability infrastructure etc the factor condition involves both the level of individual factors as well as the overall composition of the resource mix factors can be country specific or industry specific factor conditions are those factors that can be exploited by companies in a given nation these include highly skilled workforce linguistic abilities of the workforce rich amount of raw material workforce shortage here you would wonder how a workforce shortage could be a positive factor condition we shall take up that point shortly the basic factors are built upon by companies to more advanced factors of competition which finally lead to competitive advantage as mentioned some time back factors normally not seen as advantageous can be factor condition strengthening competitiveness we took the example of workforce shortage well workforce shortage may focus a company's attention on zero defect and automation thereby leading to even more competitiveness similarly there could be other factor condition for example japan has the largest pool of engineers it is high the highest per capita engineering graduates than any other nation this factor has been vital to its success in manufacturing industries moving on to the demand conditions if the local market for a product is larger and more demanding than the foreign markets firms potentially put more emphasis on improvement of their products as compared to the emphasis given by foreign companies this increases the global competitiveness of local exporting companies thus a more demanding home market is a driver of growth innovation and quality improvement for example japanese consumers have historically been more demanding of electrical and electronics equipment than their western counterparts this has partly founded the success of japanese manufacturers within this sector moving on to the related and supporting industries the presence of internationally competitive suppliers and other related industries is also a important factor until the mid 1980s the technological leadership of the us semiconductor industry provided the basis for the success in personal computers and several other technically advanced electronics product in the us adoption of automobiles in the us actually took off only after the construction of a national system of highways and gas stations when local supporting industries and suppliers are competitive companies get more cost effective and innovative parts and products for example the italian shoe industry benefits from a highly competitive pool of related businesses and industries 
which has strengthened the competitiveness of the Italian shoe industry worldwide. Finally, we come to the fourth factor, which is firm strategy, structure and rivalry. This factor shows that instead of inter-firm rivalry, cooperation is a vital component of corporate strategy. That is, companies should form strategic alliances, especially with organizations in related and supporting industries. This factor partly also explains the concept of a resource curse. Resource curse? Well, it tells us about why a large natural resource base is not sufficient to develop industrial might. You might be wondering that Africa as a continent is rich in natural resources, yet we do not have many industries based from that continent. This is nothing else but a resource curse. Moving on, the structure and management system of firms in different countries can potentially affect competitiveness. For example, German firms are often very hierarchical, which has resulted in advantages within industries such as engineering. In contrast, the Danish firms are often more flat and organic, which leads to advantages within industries like biochemistry and design. Finally, when we talk about rivalry, we can safely state that home markets with less rivalry is often counterproductive for organization. It acts as a barrier to the generation of globally competitive advantages such as innovation and R&D. When rivalry in domestic market is fierce, companies build up capabilities that act as competitive advantages on a global scale. So the firm strategy, structure and rivalry is more or less based on a particular nation because national conditions determine how companies are created, organized and managed as well as the nature and extent of domestic rivalry. For example, the predominance of engineers on top management teams of German and Japanese firms has resulted in emphasizing the improvement of manufacturing processes and product design. Domestic rivalry creates pressure to launch new products, to improve quality, to reduce costs and to invest in new and more advanced technologies. So as per the Porter's diamond model, we have the factor conditions which are based on the nation's resources, the demand conditions which is dependent on the kind of customers who are available within a nation, the related and supporting industries and its interplay with the firm's strategy the structure and rivalry within the nation. As per Michael Porter, these four factors together lead to competitive advantage of a nation. Later on, Michael Porter identified two additional attributes that indirectly influences the diamond. It is the government. We know that choice of policies can influence each of the four basic factors as were mentioned by Porter. And secondly, we have the chance. These are developments outside the control of the firm and the government. Among the additional attributes, we know that successful government policies work where underlying determinants of national advantage are present government can raise the odds of gaining competitive advantage but lacks the power to create advantages on its own. In contrast, the chance factors allow new players to exploit opportunities 
arising from a reshaped industry structure like radical innovations unexpected oil price changes revolutions wars etc so as per the porter's diamond model we have the factor conditions the demand conditions related and supporting industries firm strategy structure and rivalry government and chance these six attributes promote or impede the creation of competitive advantages of firms clusters and nations all conditions need to be present favorably for an industry or organization within a country to attain global supremacy now let us have a look at some of the implications of the diamond model with the help of this model managers can determine if a home market can support and sustain a successful bid to internationalize a particular firm managers can use it to assess in which country to invest next this model helps entrepreneurs to decide where to start their next venture government officials can use this model for guidance on how to best develop a supporting policy framework for a given industry this is all about michael porter's diamond model for more on the model you may refer to the following books to which i had also referred for further details or comments please write into anupamkr at the rate gmail.com that is a n u p a m k r at the rate gmail.com i shall look forward to your comments hope you enjoyed this session thank you